Shalom Aleichem, everybody. Hope all is well. Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses, our teacher, is a prophet like no other. Our Holy Torah attests to this and says there will not, uh, no prophet arose like Moses after him. We know that Moses was, was the prophet who, who reached the highest level of godly revelation to the point where, where it says in the Torah that no man prophesies like Moses speaking to God face to face. We know that Hashem is not physical doesn't have a face, a physical face like we do. But we learn that the Torah is given in the language of human beings. So, so to speak, Moses saw, saw the face, spoke face to face to, to Hashem. He spoke to God at the closest level. Because the word in Hebrew, panim, also means, is connected to the word bifnim. In panim face is connected to the word bifnim, which means inside. Moshe saw the innermost part of God in comparison to others. Of course, there was even a level that Moshe Rabbeinu himself was not able, capable of, of seeing. The level of actually the, the innermost, part of Hash, innermost part of Hashem's revelation, Hashem, so to speak, the, inner, the deepest level of godly revelation, that level actually Moses did not see yet, but he saw the edge, the edge, the achorayim, the outer edge of that level, so to speak. So, so, so what does this all mean that, that, that Moshe was able to see a higher level of Hashem than any, any, any other prophet? It's an interesting thing to say the, the, the innermost part, the outer parts, but what does this mean in practicality? How can we understand Moshe's prophecy in relation to other, other prophets and what this means for us? So basically the main thing is in, in what, what um, distinguishes Moshe's prophecy from other prophets' prophecies is the other prophets, when they received prophecy, they had to go in a state of sleep, in a vision. They received a vision from Hashem. And from that vision, they were able to decipher and comprehend what Hashem made it clear to them, what exactly they had to say over to the people, what exactly the prophecy was. But with Moshe, it wasn't a vision. It wasn't Moshe did not have to go into a state of sleep and enter uh, a realm where he was experiencing visions from Hashem. Moshe was able to just be in full state, in a full awake state, and experience prophecy, experience speaking, communicating with Hashem while he was fully awake. Why? Why was Moshe able to do this and other prophets were not? Because Moshe was at such a high level already, he was so pure, he was so refined, that even when he was just fully awake and he was fully conscious and his body was fully functioning, he was able to experience the divine. Whereas other prophets, it was too much for them to handle. They had to go into a state of sleep. Hashem had to turn off their their own normal ways, patterns of being awake, their normal thought patterns, and Hashem had to reveal to them a vision, only according to their abilities. But Moshe was so refined that his awake state was no contradiction at all to godliness. He was pure. He was pure, and he was totally given over to Hashem. So he was capable of 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 handling and, and enjoying the divine revelation while he was fully awake. And it's interesting because the Torah was specifically given through Moshe to us. And it says that actually what happened was how it worked is there was a whole hierarchy, so to speak. All We know everyone's equal in the eyes of Hashem. There's Moshe Rabbeinu and another Jew, and even the most simple Jew in the world are equally Jewish. Equally the sons of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the children of Hashem. But Moshe is at a higher level of learning. He was at a higher level of understanding. He was therefore able to give something to the other students that they weren't able to get on their own, that they needed Moshe for. So it says that there was a whole system of hierarchy of highest level of teachers. That first Hashem would teach Moshe. Then Moshe and Aaron would come and Hashem would reteach it to Moshe and Aaron together. And then Hashem would say, Moshe, now you teach Aaron. Hashem, and, and then Aaron's sons would come. Moshe would teach Aaron and his sons. And then Aaron would teach his sons. And then his sons would teach the, the elders. And the elders would teach the people. So it was a whole hierarchy. So Moshe and Aaron first learned it. Everyone would learn it twice. First, it would just be Moshe, Hashem and Moshe. Then Aaron and Hashem. Then Moshe would reteach it to Aaron. Then Aaron would teach it to his son. Uh, Aaron, Moshe... Aaron's sons would come listen to Moshe and Aaron, then Aaron would just teach sons and so on and so forth, that everyone would get a chance to relearn it a couple times with somebody who was at a higher level than them. Until the point where then the elders would teach the, 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 the entire nation. 
So we learn that it says Moshe Rabbeinu put himself a ray, put a, a, a ray of his soul into the elders. Uh, a, 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 a spark of Moshe's soul went into the 70 elders, the tzaddikim that were deciphering, teaching the, the Torah to the nation after Moshe taught it to them. So we learned something very interesting from this, that what does it mean that Moshe put a spark of himself into the elders? We learned that specifically Moshe, the Moses, and by the way, there's a Moses of every generation. And, and that, that, that's we learned, that we learned from, from, we learned this from Scripture, but it's something specifically that the Moshe of this generation, the Rebbe says that every generation has a Moshe, talking specifically when he speaks about the Friedrich Rebbe, his father, the Rebbe's father-in-law, the, the previous Rebbe before him. So we learn that in every generation there's a Moshe. And the, uh, what's interesting is a person could say, why, why do we need Moshe? Why do we need Moshe? We can learn directly from Hashem. Why can't we just all just learn directly from Hashem? Why do we, all, why do we need Moshe? The answer is a beautiful but simple answer. And it is that Moshe allows us to reach, to reveal who we truly are, to reach who we truly are. Because Hashem made it so that Hashem, so that, so that Hashem's Torah is taught in this world through human beings to each other. Hashem wants us to teach each other Torah. We should teach our children Torah. Our student, we should have, you know, a teacher teaches his students Torah. They're all trying to connect to Hashem, and Hashem works through human beings. So Hashem reveals Himself through Moshe, through reveals His Torah through Moshe. Because normally a person cannot handle such a intense revelation of God right away. It will be too much for them to handle. A person can actually pass away from that. Just like we learned when Hashem revealed Himself at Mount Sinai to the Jewish people. At first, when Hashem first was saying the commandments, the people's souls left their body and Hashem had to put it back into their soul. Until the point where Hashem, then the people said, no, just speak directly to Moshe. And Moshe, let Moshe repeat the commandments to us. Why was Moshe able to handle this? Because Moshe was already so refined that he was capable of being at that level. And he wasn't harmed by it. It was, it was enjoyable for him. So too, in, on an everyday basis, Moshe is so close to Hashem, he's so in tune with Hashem, that he's able to then give over to us according to our level what we need in our personal life to connect to Hashem. And this, of course, is a is an analogy for, for also for the Mashiach, because the Mashiach will be the Moshe of his generation. The Mashiach will be the second, will be the second redeemer, so to speak, the final redeemer. Moshe was the first redeemer when we redeemed us from Egypt. The Mashiach will be the redeemer who will take us out of this Egypt, the Egypt we're in right now, the final exile, with the final redemption. We know that Mashiach will also be at a tremendously lofty level of prophecy. He will actually be at a level, it says in prophecy, just under Moshe. Everyone else will be, Moshe is so much greater, his prophecy is so much loftier, so much more intense than any other prophet, except for Moshe, who will actually be just right under him in prophecy. And then eventually we know that actually Moshe will bring the world to a state where they will experience a level, where everyone in the world will experience, this will be a later development of Moshe, where there will be, the entire world will experience a greater level of prophecy than even what Moses experienced. But that will be later on in the days of Moshe. But before that, Moshe will be right under Moshe in prophecy. So this is something interesting to note, that we are all intertwined with one another. The Jewish people are actually likened to a body. Each, each of our souls connect to the general soul of Adam Arishon, Adam. And each one of us has a different role. We know that Moshe is the head. What's interesting about the head? The head includes the entire, entire body. The head has a map of the entire body and is the actual director of the body and makes sure that each specific part of the body is getting the nourishment and the health that it deserves and needs. That is an analogy for Moshe Rabbeinu, who is the head of our people. He makes sure that each body part, each different part of our nation is getting the spiritual nourishment that they need. And that is the way Hashem connects to us. It's not that we can connect to Hashem. Why, why do we connect to Moshe? No, Moshe is the one who connects us to Hashem. Because he's at such a high level, Hashem makes it. Hashem made him our teacher. Hashem wants it to be done through him. That is the way in which it connects to us. Because it's able to go into us in a, in a, more, in a more internalized way. If we were to experience a vision or a prophecy, who knows if, 
this specific person would be able to handle that prophecy. It might be too much for him to handle. But when Moshe comes and teaches him, he can teach him at the measurement that he needs to connect to Hashem. And of course, Hashem has no limits. Hashem could have chosen to do it directly to himself. But Hashem wants it to be done through the prophet, the, the leader of our generation. Hashem wants us to connect to the leader and to learn and be students of the tzaddik. And through that, we'll get closer to Hashem himself. That we can teach each other the Torah. And also, we know that when we, when we learn, actually after years, it says after 40 years of learning from your master, you can reach the level of your master, that the, that the tzaddik and us were intertwined because all of our souls are a part of God. And there's no limit to each and every one of us how high we can reach. If we believe in ourselves, we will understand that our soul is a part of God. And therefore, there's actually no limit to how, how high we can reach. It all depends on how much we act in accordance with what Hashem wants in this world. And the, re the more we refine ourselves, it is an automatic reaction. The more we, we refine ourselves and connect to Hashem, automatically, the more our soul becomes revealed within us. So, so this is exciting stuff. And Bezat Hashem will reach the days of Mashiach where we'll, we'll, we'll experience this in actuality and we'll see this level. We'll get to experience this level, the greatest possible pleasure, the pleasure that not even Moshe Rabbeinu yet saw. Bezat Hashem, we'll see you today. May Hashem bless you all. Please like, comment, and share. Please help support the Torah channel. Please help spread this message. Keep up the amazing work.